Hi guys, so welcome back. So we're going to talk a little bit about long-term care and the funding that pays for it. So first of all, we need to talk about what is long-term care. So long-term care is a type of medicine or medical coverage and attention that we provide to family members, patients, whatever you like to call them, um, that need more attention than what they can provide for their or, or on their own. Um, they need help with ADLs, so activities of daily living. This is things like putting on your shoes, putting on your belt, uh, brushing your teeth, cooking, um, finances, getting dressed, changing, things like that. So the people who are allotted or allowed long-term care, um, these are people who um, it's available um, and typically offered for two different types of people. Uh, we consider them either disabled, either mentally, physically, emotionally, um, or the frail elderly. So our disabled patients, typically the it's kind of a broad spectrum of patients, but these tend to be uh, patients or family members that require care on multiple levels of interaction. It encompasses um, a variety of physical and cognitive impairments, so uh, be it mental retardation, um, a learning disability, or a physical impairment, um, uh, back injury, m missing uh, a leg in amputation, or some type of brain injury that um, disables them enough that they can't do things on their own. So the frail elderly are just people that have reached a certain age or a point in their life where their body is physically not able to help them do whatever it is that they want to do. And if you look at the graph right here, you can kind of see that the further and further along we go in our lives, um, the more medical advances that we have, the longer people are living, so the more we're having, and then the uh, the more detriment that that living longer is doing to us, unfortunately. Um, so, with long-term care, there tends to be five different types of facilities that we see: so rehab, hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, nursing homes, assisted living, and home health. And they just range in um, amounts of attention that the patient needs down to home health. So that's things like having a CNA come to your house and just helping with cooking, so you don't burn yourself. So um, in regards to funding, there's two, three main ways that you guys can see here on the graph where the funding for these facilities comes from. Number one is Medicare, and the other one is Medicaid, with a close second to being um, out-of-pocket expenses, so like your private funding, that's where you are physically paying for something that's similar to um, the co-pays for your medication when you go see the dentist, when you go see your doctor. Mm. Um, again, so funding, um, you can see from the previous graph, Medicare and Medicaid are our number one. Number two, private funding, again, is from yourself. So uh, our Medicaid Medicare came into effect, as you guys can see here, in 1965 when President Johnson signed that into effect, and that has been a tremendous um, game changer for the most people in regards to their health care. So um, public funding um, is available through for long-term care via things like our um, state and federal taxes. That's where Medicare, Medicaid come from. So you right now are paying for this, whether you're using, able to use it or not, or going to use it or not, it's still coming out of your paycheck. So, but your mother and your father and your grandmother, grandfather and your kids and your neighbors are gonna pay for it as well. So it's kind of a win-win a, a for everybody involved. Um, the private funding options um, that we're gonna talk about here real quickly are um, things that you personally have invested in so things like your insurance personal investments like a 401k um, or the ability to liquidate assets sell your car sell your house sell your shoes mm, the major differences read through here with me so when you're paying for uh, long-term care your options are limited so Medicare Medicaid can pay for most of it but it's not necessarily built that way Medicaid is a fallback it's a safety net and ultimately so technically was Medicare it's not built to pay for all this stuff it's built as a secondary that you guys are supposed to use for um, the primary so your investments that you are developing and building to pay for your retirement now guys pay attention to this next slide because it may or may not shock you or scare you um, as you guys can see here the average across the board for the United States um, uh, one year in a nursing home costs, as you guys see, about $80,000. Now, I don't even make that much in a year of working today right now, so for me to be able to shell out $80,000 is a nightmare. So um, privatizing our retirement, um, so 
relatively recently in our insurance policy world, um, LTCI, so the I is just incidental or insurance, um, appeared in the 1980s, and this is a way for your for um, I would say service members, um, patients to buy an insurance policy that actually has. Um, a stipulation for long-term care built into it. It was aimed at offering more choices and options for the consumer with a little bit more um, protection against incidental things that may or may not come along uh, secondary in their life to uh, discourt them from being able to be covered by that insurance policy. Um, the average annual premium you guys can read costs around $2,200 a year and the payout rate is still only about $150 a day for that long-term care facility. So again, this is uh, portion or type of private um, pay that you guys can do have an option for. You just have to decide which one's going to be better for you um, in the long run as far as how your bank account can manage it. So um, other options include a hybrid life in long-term care or an annuity in long-term care uh, versus a health savings account. These are just ways that you um, pay into or afford and manage your money before you get to the place where you actually need to start spending it and utilizing it. Or you can also use, like most people have a personal savings account or home equity that maybe you can sell your home at one point in time or you have, unfortunately, to take out a second mortgage and have that uh, cash lump sum up front. So um, in regards to the difference between a private or a um, public or an FBO, so your faith-based organizations, the, the primary difference, as you guys can read here, um, there's really none. Everyone's money comes from the same place, either taxpayers or it comes from um, personal or private funding. With FBOs, you typically are going to find more uh, private funding, so more people giving and pulling out of their own pockets to give to others, uh, the more humanitarian way um, to afford things. So, um, unfortunately and or conclusively, there's no statistical difference between um, the effectiveness of an FBO, like you guys can read, a church affiliated nursing home, or the uh, secular counterpart, so wherever grandma and grandpa may or may not be living right now. So, um, the unfortunate side of things, really, as you guys can read through here real fast, um, there's no program out there that's going to protect you or protect your assets once you get into a, um, a skilled nursing facility or any other type of retirement program. If you have to pay for it, you have to pay for it or your family will pay, pay for it, whether it be the dollars out of their pockets or with their stress or with their time or with their effort.